it's wired into us. It's the same thing that our ancestors have done for thousands of years. Part of what we experience as pure joy now was a key to simple survival at one time. We are wired for a thrill of finding food in nature. It's just as pure as it can be. I'm Connie Green. I have been dealing with wild mushrooms primarily for 3,000 years. <laughs> okay, boy, there's usually some in this bank. Let me look real quick. There's a technical term we use called pity pat. You just literally pity pat around the ground, trying to feel for the lumps. See its little Bambi teeth marks? Don't get broken. It got chopped on. When I was a kid, if I saw a big mushroom out of the ground, I would just tee off and kick it as hard as I could. That's what boys do, though. Yeah. Girls don't do that. Mushroom's survival strategy, to a great extent, is to be found, because this is their way their spores get spread. It's dry. Yeah. You know, way, way, way deep. I'm not finding youngsters growing. Okay, off we go. Last week, when we started here, right on the other side of the path in there, mm -hmm. about 50 feet in, mm -hmm. was like 20. And then down. Shoulda, woulda, coulda. Yeah, and no, in, cause. Today's the day. We spend so much time looking at the ground that you miss the beauty of the place sometimes. Sean is a special creature to me. He has a great sensitivity and tenderness about eyeballing nature. He can get a feeling about the existence of a mushroom because he has a superb palate and a superb nose. It's one of the few times my head is like completely clear. There's one specific focus, and that's to find this little hump in the ground you know, it's a very relaxing experience for me. Aha! Got something? Yeah. Beautiful. Are they seps? Ooh. <laughs> oh, they're, those are pretty. They're not what you think. What are they? They're Cortinarius. What are Cortinarius? Cortinarius is another spring mushroom that it seems to have been put on Earth to annoy me. Um, to fake you out. It says beautiful tobacco brown spores that cover its stems, but edibility unknown. It's foolish to think that nature's going to wait for us to show up to collect wild food, and it's delicious. So deer eat it, bugs eat it, but in the case of the bugs, it's very clever. They have this beautiful little penthouse structure. They can eat the porcinis, lay their babies in a major food source. So it's a wonder we get any at all. Oh yeah. Got a bunch of little people it's living in it too. It's a busy, happy village. Give it a proper burial. Yeah. One of the games that I play and other people play is to think like a mushroom. Reading the habitat, reading the weather conditions. Some of us almost have this fantasy that there's some budding mushroom underground who is the one who sticks its head out of the ground and says, it's safe, you can all come out now. And this is got possible. It's pretty. Um, they're hard as rocks. You can cut into one. If I cut this in half, it, you could almost hear it crack like a watermelon. That's a really good one. I need this one too, huh? And there's one <laughs> underneath these right here. Right here. We have we have twins. Yep. We have twins. This is truly these guys when they want a ring mushroom model, this is this is what they need right here. And another one. Oh, I'm full its size. And there we go.
I like that. It has that almost Spongy. firm marshmallow texture. Yeah. And um, here. Keeper. Yeah. That's the kind that's going to taste extra good. Mushrooms like this that are rather large, a lot of times the bugs get there first, but if you pound on them, and that melon-like sound usually means it's sound all the way through. Few wormy occupants. It's sound. For me, finding mushrooms, I go to a lot of the same places over and over again. And they are old friends. It is the trees that they grow under. I feel almost like family. It's just, I never, ever, ever, ever tire of seeing how beautiful they are. It's, I'm really, I have the full on heart and brain of an eight year old girl.